and then continue with second second John, God willing, after the uh, pastor prayer has come and gone. Let me rehash what we did two two Sundays ago. John, by the Spirit of God, now this is John the Apostle, the one who was exiled to the island of Patmos. This is John the Apostle, Apostle, and he had a, a face-to-face encounter with Jesus Christ. He met Jesus Christ. He was called a beloved. So for him, when he's writing, it's because see that he's writing from with all his heart, because he knows what he's writing about and he believes what he's writing about. He says, whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loves him, that's verse 1, loves him that begot, loves him also, that is what? Begot him. So you cannot say you love God but hate Jesus Christ. You cannot say you are serving God when you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the only way. And that is the difference between those all the religions who uh, they are, now we are saying here we say all religions lead to God. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Jesus Christ is God incarnate. Amen. And it is only through Jesus Christ that we get to see God. Amen. Without Christ, our worship is in vain. Mm. Amen. Amen. Our worship is in vain. So we for that we 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 make no excuse for saying that Jesus Christ is our only way. Now, so whosoever believes in Jesus Christ is born of God. You, are, you only have to believe in Christ to be born again. Not in Mohammed, not in Abraham, not in Buddha, not in uh, Jacob, not in Isaac, not in Confucius, none of those ones who give a new birth. It is only Jesus Christ. You have to believe in Jesus Christ to be what? Born again. And so that's what John is saying, that whosoever believes, anyone who puts his faith and his trust in Jesus Christ is, is born of God. And everyone that loves him, that loves him that begat, loves God, loves God, has to also love the one who is begotten of God, and it is Jesus Christ. So that's what we, 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 we learned last week. And we also found out that by this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep His word, we love God and keep His word. You cannot love God and not keep His word. You and I cannot love God and not obey the word of what? Of God. We can't. We can't love God and obey and not obey His word. What I'm saying is that you can't say you've been born again and keep on living in what? In sin. You can't. You can't say I've been born again. Jesus Christ lives in my heart. And you go on fornicating, committing adultery, and lying, and gossiping, and stealing, and walking in arrogant pride, and ego, and all those things. Those are not characteristics of Jesus Christ. Those are not. The Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see God. So to rehash, from verse 1 to 9, we found all those writings there. So let me jump into chapter uh, verse 10. Verse 10 is that he that believes on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believes on the Son of God has the witness in what? Yes. In himself. When you believe on Jesus Christ, you have him in your heart and he is the witness. He has the witness in himself. He that believes not God has made him what? A liar. Because he believes not the record that God gave of his word, son. Now, he that believes not God, when you say we do, he that believes not God, we are talking about he who does not believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. The um, Satan believes that there is God. The demons believe that they tremble. So just because you believe God that there is God doesn't make you a Christian. Believing God is when you receive Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Lord and personal Savior, that you have your life changed. When Christ comes into you, He's a witness. He changes your life. So when we don't believe in God, we don't receive the testimony of God that Jesus Christ is His only begotten Son, then we make God a liar. And there are so many of us Christians who call ourselves Christians who are making God look like He's what? A liar. Because our lifestyle does not show that we really have believed in Jesus Christ. Our lifestyle. Hello? The things we do, 
daily does not tell the world that we really believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. If when Jesus lives in your life, when you have believed in Jesus Christ, you become a new world creation. When we believe in Jesus Christ, we become a new creation. Our lives are transformed. Our lives are transformed. If we used to be liars, we don't lie anymore. When we used to gossip, we don't gossip anymore. When we used not to pray, now we become prayerful because we are talking to the living God. The prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. The prayerless Christian is a listless Christian. He that believes on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believes not God has made him a liar because he believes not the record that God has given of his Son. And this is the record that God has given, that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in who? Eternal life is not in Muhammad. Eternal life is not in Abraham. Eternal life is not in Moses. Eternal life. I'm careful to talk about this thing because so that no one will think that we are just bashing Muslims. No, 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 no. It's, eternal life is not in Moses, it's not in Abraham, it's not in Isaac, it's not in Jacob, it's not in Buddha, it's not in Confucius. It is only in Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Abraham, Moses, Buddha, and all those people have to come through Jesus Christ to see God. Amen. And it's a he that have the son has life. And he that has not the son of God has not what? Life. Beloved, it is so clear. It's a crystal clear. It's a, when you don't have Jesus Christ in you, you don't have life. If I don't have Jesus Christ in me, I don't have what? Life. I can preach all I want, but I don't want to have what? Life. It is easy to some, maybe it's difficult. But it is easy to preach nowadays because all you do is to go on, uh, as some have, I uh, hear some do, go on internet and print out something and come and read it for this thing. So just because you stand behind a pulpit and preach, it doesn't make you what? A Christian. And it doesn't give you life. But it is eternal life is only in Jesus Christ, it is only in Christ. He is the only one who gives us eternal life. It is only Jesus. It is only Jesus. You know when we were coming back from Pittsburgh, we go to a place and it says five percent. So put the uh, this gear in L. It was I mean a steep, a steep decline as you come down, and over there my heart was over here. But as I was driving, coming out, you know, they, they said, okay, now, but you believe in Jesus Christ. Why are you afraid to die? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that was what was going through. Why are you afraid to die? You preach about heaven. You talk about all those things. Why are you afraid to die? Because if, if you really believe in Jesus Christ and you know when you die, you are going to meet him. Well, you don't want to go and meet Christ. No, but we don't want to die early. <laughs> <laughs> These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have what? Eternal life. For you and I to know that we have eternal life, we have to put our faith in Jesus Christ. No, no, not in Pastor Pimpon. Hello? Yes. Not in Pastor what? Pimpon. Just be, you put your faith in Pastor Pimpon, my friend, we both will go to the wrong place. <laughs> Don't put your faith in Pastor Pimpon. Well, but I thank God for what Paul said. Paul said, follow me as I follow what? Christ. He's not saying, put your faith in me. But he says, follow my example. And by the grace of God, I try to model Christ before all of us. Amen. 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 And I don't seek to claim any perfection. But we try to model our, our lives after, after, after Christ. So that those who, want to, you know, those who want to compare our lives with the word we preach, at least can find something solid to, to hang on. Amen. But you don't put your faith or your trust in man because man will let you down. Hallelujah. 
says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. To know that you have eternal life, you have to put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Of God. A sister was asking me to, I think, she, I believe she said it's here, and she, was, she wanted me to anoint oil for her. And I said, that's good, I will anoint the oil for you. But I don't want you to put your faith in oil. I don't want to put your faith in water. Your faith has to be in Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen? Don't put your faith in oil. Those are just means by which the Lord uses that. But your faith has to be solidly anchored in who? In Christ. He is the only one who gives us eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, now I want you, I want us all to pay, pay heed to this place, verse 14, because so many of us have been told that if you ask anything, the Lord has to do it. But we, we, we take it out of context. This is what he says. And this is the confidence that we have in who? In Christ. That if we ask anything according to his what? Will. According to his will. So we have to always remember that according to what? His will. According to his will. If I come along and I say, the Lord says, if you ask anything, you will do it. And that is why you have so many people have thanked God, Jesus Christ in 12, Santa Claus, and for the Christmas. He has to do what I'm asking him to do. Well, it has to be according to what? His will. It has to be according to his will. Is it the Lord's will that you have that thing that you are asking him? But that is where we don't wait. Most of us don't want to wait. We just want to get it at all costs and we, we force God. You know, we force God. Some of us cajole him. It has to be according to his will. His perfect will, that is. Of course, some of us have come up with something we call permissive will. But there is nothing like a permissive. God only has a perfect will. He has a perfect will. But when you and I keep on insisting, that is when he move, removes himself. He said, whatever, if you, that's what you want. You go and get it, but you have the consequence of the face. It says, and this is the confidence. We have confidence that we have him in him. There's a confidence we have in Jesus Christ. And if we ask anything according to his will, he what? He hears us. I told you, I shared with you, we went to Carnegie Mellon, and we went there knowing that we have to pay. 10,000. Is it the will of God that we pay 10,000? He knows that we don't have that money. I can only weep before him. And I was indeed weeping before him. I cried before God. I said, Lord, you know, we don't have this. We don't have, how can we afford to pay that? Well, we can't. We don't have it. It's always good to tell the truth. You know, uh, God, I don't, we don't have it. So God, You've, you've been so good to us. Over the years, you have been so good. You are not about to let me down. As we knock on that door. And then he said, pick up the phone, call the financial aid office, tell them that you are going to want to meet with them, ask for a meeting. So we went and met. And here is this lady that we entered into that place and she was almost like a sister to us. I mean, she was so nice, and she said, what do you want, blah, 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 blah. Before she finished everything, but she said, we'll get back with you early tomorrow morning. Early tomorrow morning, they, this lady came, and they raised it up. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, increase the scholarship mm. from 42000 to 59000 so that we have to only pay a thousand eight hundred. But it, I say only because between a thousand eight hundred and ten thousand a semester, that's a huge one. But then, what are we? That is what God. That is what Jesus Christ done. He's He's never never let us down. I took. I shared with you also at the School of Discipleship and Leadership this morning that I I started picking up papers, uh, pennies, coins, 
I will be picking coins. Whenever I go to work out, because in my mind, I'm going to find a, a penny that is about uh, 70, 76 days on it or 1800, and then sell it and make money so we can take care of the bills of the church. That is all of my heart. That is all occupies my mind and my heart. And God found a way to raise somebody to come and be a blessing. You know, that is what God, he has been so faithful. And if this God has been so faithful, how can I walk crookedly before him? Amen. I cannot. I can only ask him for grace so I can walk within his perfect will. will. That's all I can do, his perfect will. Because it is almost like you are hanging by a thin word, thread. Anything against, if that thread is cut, where are you going to be? And I thank God for that place that he's put me, so that I wouldn't depend on my own strength. But I rely wholly and totally on him. So this is it. This is we have this confidence, and that is what keeps us going. We have this confidence that we have him, we have Jesus Christ in us. That if we ask anything according to what his will, he hears us. According to his will, it is his perfect will that Kofi gets the money increased. Mm -hmm. Because God knows our strength that we don't, we can't work afford it. Even the 1800 we can't afford, let alone 10,000. And God also knows our hearts that we have laid our life down for his sheep, for his flock. And whenever you lay your life down for his flock, he takes care of, of you. And if we know that he hears us, listen to what he says. If we know that he hears us, whosoever, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Now, again, let us not lose sight of his will, because we can easily take take this in out of context and only jump on verse 15 and ignore verse what? 14. But verse 14 says that anything we ask according to what? His will. So we have to add his will to verse what? 15. Hello? So that you and I will not say, well, whatever I ask the Lord, he will give to me. So you walk out of the church and you start walking at Evan Park and looking at the million dollar homes and you say, God said, whatever I ask, he will give me. Lord, give me this million dollar house. And then in the meantime, you don't even have a job. Or maybe the job that you have, the money you are being paid, cannot. you need all of that money to pay the mortgage plus or more. So you see how we 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 letting ourselves with what burdens in the name of the Lord says as you want whatever I ask is you want okay. it should be according to his what will his perfect will everything that we do has to be according to what his perfect will please let us lose sight of that his perfect will his perfect will his perfect will his perfect will God is this your will is this your will if any man see his brother sin a sin, <laughs> this is a one area where so many pastors, so many of us are struggling to find out which sin are we talking about. He says, if any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin that leads to what? Death. And there is a sin that doesn't lead to death. That doesn't mean that they are both not sin. They are all sin. sin. But there is one that does not lead to death. When you go to Hebrews chapter 6 and Hebrews chapter 10, there is a sin that the writer talks about. He says, if we sin willfully, willful sin leads to what? Death. Willful sin is when you know what you're doing is wrong and you keep on what, doing it. And the Holy Ghost keeps on convicting you and you ignore it and you keep on what, doing it. You keep on doing it, you will die. Proverbs 29 verse 1. He that is often corrected. Proverbs 29 verse 1. He who is often corrected but hardens his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and without what, remedy. Now we have to understand that First John is written to believers, not unbelievers. So he's talking to you and I. Mm -hmm. That if, uh, if I see a brother sin a sin that does not lead to death, 
Let's say I, I know that this brother is doing everything to please God. But then suddenly he's caught in something. Okay. I know it is not he's he's not one who is is uh, set his heart to do, live in rebellion. Such a sin does not lead to death. He said, pray for him that God will give him life, that the Lord will have mercy and forgive him. So you have what? Life. But there is the willful sin where the person will not listen at all. Even when you come, you, you try to exhort him, he, he just becomes so hardened. That sin is a sin that leads to what? Death. Let's look at the book of Proverbs quickly. Today we will, wow, it's like we are, we are, we are, on, we are on time. We will let you go. When we went to peace break, we, we learned that we have to close that resource. Yeah. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 1. Let me read that for you, for us. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Tell you at my reproof. Tell you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you have set at naught all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. Did you hear that? Yes. Who, is, who is talking? God. He said, I also will laugh at your what? Calamity. I will mock when your fear comes. When your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish comes upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. Did I put it there? They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Hello? At this, you know, so many of us, the Lord wakes us up early in the morning sometimes to pray, but we don't do what? Pray. We just send a deaf ear to it. But it says that it's the time coming when you desperately need him. But that is when he was not know what? It says, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despise all my reproofs. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own what? way, and be filled with their own what? devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkens unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be what? Quiet from fear of evil. This is what John is talking about. That if you see a brother sin, the sin that does not lead to death, we can pray that the, the Lord will deliver him. Mm -hmm. But he says, let me continue. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that you should what? Pray for it. All unrighteousness is what? Sin. <laughs> and there is a sin not unto what? Death. All unrighteousness is what? All unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness is sin. But there is one that does not lead to death. And I have rehashed in our ears Proverbs chapter 1 and from verse 22 and then also Proverbs 29, which says that. Now we know that whosoever is born of God sins not, does not make it a habit to do what? Sin. Whosoever is born of God, anyone who has received Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal Savior, does not make it a habit of what? Sinning. Hello? Does not make it a habit of what? Sinning. Beloved, if you and I have Jesus Christ living in our hearts, you will not delight in sin. Yeah, that's right. You will not delight in sin. You and I will not delight in sin. If Jesus Christ lives in our hearts, we will not delight in sin. We will not. And what is sin anyway? Because when we talk about sin, the first thing that comes into our, our mouth, um, our ear, our heart, or maybe uh, fornication, or maybe stealing, or maybe homosexuality, 
uh, maybe those things that we think are big. <laughs> on, on TCT this week, they, somebody called and said, uh, what about white lies? You know, and white lies, you know, that, but there's nothing, there's nothing like white lie or black lie. All lie is what? Lie. And all lying is sin. All lying is sin. The person said, if I tell a, a little white lie to, so that I can, to, 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 not, so that I can, I cannot offend my, my friend. No. All lie is what? A sin. So there is nothing like a big sin and a small sin. Sin is sin. And sin is a reproach to the Lord. And you and I as Christians do not make it a habit of what? Sinning. When you and I sin, the Holy Spirit of God convicts us. And we have to quickly what? Confess. Repent. And when we confess, we just don't confess and say we have confessed. But when you confess, you purpose in your heart to give his word, to turn away from that evil, to do his perfect will. Amen. Hello? Amen. When we when we repent, when we, 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 if we, we are caught, we catch ourselves lying, we don't just say, Lord, I'm sorry, I lied, and then go back and do it again. If you go back and do it again, it means that you've made, you are, you are made me sorry for what I did. And God knows our hearts. Yes. You know. So we are, he said, we know that whosoever is born of God sins not. We don't make it a habit of sinning. But he that is begotten of God keeps himself. Do you get that one? He that is begotten of God does what? Keeps himself. keeps himself or herself. So it is your responsibility, it is my responsibility to keep myself. So then there is a big party going on somewhere. And they say Beyonce is coming. Snoopy Dog Dog is coming. <laughs> and all those guys are coming. Now from the point from the from the word go, you know that those people didn't come in there just because of those people. You don't even have to do what go. But you just say, oh no, I have to just go. I'm just going to see, see what. It is so strange how we find people who call themselves Christians running to all this kind of all of this kind of what they call it concepts. The songs that the people are singing, who inspired that song? The songs that Beyonce sing, are they inspired of the Holy Spirit? Do they edify you? The songs that Michael Jackson sings, are they songs edified? You know, all those things. So just, just the mere fact that they are, that, that you read the, read what, the flag, the red flag. But you have so many of us who consider Christians will go anyway. Will go anyway, and they will dance to those music, and then come back to the house of God and dance to the. And the Lord looks at us, looks at us, and this people, even the bath is better, because the bath, you know, you have a bath, doesn't know whether it belongs to the bird family or the four-footed animals, because it has teeth and it has what wings. And there are some of us Christians who act like bats, you know. We are over there where the rock and roll is going on, and then on Sunday we come and we just clean our lips, and we are there sanctified, saved. I'm filled, sanctified. I'm saved, sanctified. So the Holy Ghost comes of him. Then the Holy Spirit of God asks, "Is it no? If you, the Holy Ghost is not the one who we ask you that question, Satan is there. Say, oh, but if you were with me yesterday, I was there with you. That's right." We know that whosoever is born of God sins what? Not. But he that is begotten of God keeps what? Himself. You and I have to keep what? Ourselves. So that the wicked one will touch what? Us not. Satan touches you when you put yourself in a place where he is. Hello? Amen. Satan, the wicked one, only touches you when you put yourself in his territory. But when you keep yourself, it says, resist the devil and we do what? Flee from you. You keep yourself. We read in the newspapers, they say the young lady who said, oh, and, uh, and they, they, he, he, he took an uh, uh, undue advantage over me, using that kind of word, you know. 
And then you said she when she was at the party, she was drunk. She was at the party, she was what? Drunk. drunk. So you've already exposed yourself to the enemy. And then when they take advantage of you, you said crying wolf. Don't put yourself there. If you're a Christian, you don't belong in that place. That wine bottle really doesn't belong to your mouth. Amen. Amen. Doesn't belong to your mouth. We have a better wine called the Holy Spirit. Amen. He relaxes your muscles. Yes. He relaxes your heart. Yes. He fills you with joy. He gives you peace. Yes. You don't wake up with all those baggages. You wake up saying, this is the day the Lord has made. I rejoice and be glad in it because the Holy Spirit is the one indwelling. You are drinking the wine of the Holy Spirit, not the wine of this world. That causes you to lose your mind. And people take advantage of you. Hallelujah. Then yeah, we know that we are of God and the whole world lie in what? We are of God. If you have been born again, you and I are of God. The world lies in what? Wickedness. That is why we are out here every Friday declaring the word of God. And that is why God is always confirming his presence. If you watch Friday, if you saw the clouds, the majority and the rest were there, it was a thick, dark coming. Because of the hurricane. But the Lord said, we have to preach his word. And he caused the cloud to pass over us. It was after the crusade when I was going home, I saw that it was what? Tall. The Lord has been so good. He's been so what? Over the good. What you and I are experiencing, and we see Friday about Friday, we should thank, count ourselves blessed. We should count ourselves what blessed because we see the reality of God. We see His what reality, the manifestation of His gifts. Friday, when we talk about how can we neglect such a great salvation. When God is confirming every one of them with signs and what wow. and wonders. And we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness. And that is true. The whole world lies in wickedness. You wake up every day, somebody has been shot dead. Somebody has been cut. You, you just don't sometimes you wonder what is going on. You know, you see two nuns, you take the two nuns, cut their throat, and kill them. Because the world lies in what? Wickedness. And Jesus Christ knew that. That is why he said, go into the world and preach my word. So when you and I have been saved, when you and I have believed in Jesus Christ, you and I cannot sit on that. We can only go out and declare to the whole world that Jesus Christ is what? And we don't have to be ashamed of that. And look, we don't have to be ashamed. We don't have to be ashamed. Because Jesus Christ wasn't ashamed when he allowed himself to be stripped naked. He wasn't ashamed when he allowed himself to be hung on a tree, partially clad, blood pouring out of him. He wasn't ashamed. So why should we be ashamed? Sometimes we feel ashamed. I've watched we feel ashamed. We find ourselves will come when there's a large crowd, is that right? And so we are so, so proud that we are belong to the large crowd. But when it is a small, we are ashamed. But God is not working with numbers. Amen. And we know that the Son of God is come. Listen to this one, I will close with that. And we know that the Son of God is come. Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Hello? He came in what? In the flesh. He was crucified. He died. He was buried. He rose again from the dead with power. He is seated at the right hand side of God the Father. He's come back in the person of the Holy Spirit, but he's coming back physically when our eyes shall do what? See. 
So, and we know that the Son of God is come and have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. Jesus Christ is what? True. That we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is what? True. Hello? Satan or your flesh sometimes makes you begin to wonder whether this but John is reassuring you and I that Jesus Christ is true. Yes. Hello? Yes. Jesus Christ is what? True. true. And that you and I know the one who is what? True. And that we are living in the truth. Jesus Christ. He is true. He is true. He is what? True. Hallelujah. And we are in him. That is true. Even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. And eternal what? Jesus Christ is the only true God. That's Hello? Right. That's right. Jesus Christ is the only true God. Hallelujah. Amen. And because he is the true God and is the eternal life. Hello? Because Jesus Christ is the true God and he is the eternal life. Little children, John is telling us, keep yourselves from what? Idols. Keep yourself from what? Idols. The things of this world that seek to get your attention, that pulls you away from God, that competes for your attention and my attention, that things in this world that compete for our attention, for our time, for everything, everything that God, that belongs to God, the things of this world also try to what? Pull them on them. And if you're not careful, you'll be worshipping those things more than what? The living God. Money is one of them. Hello? Money is what? One of them. Possession, material possessions are what? Just one of them. School can be also one of them. It's good to go to school. Hello? But don't say because you are going to school, you don't have time to pray. Amen. Don't say because you are studying, you don't have time to what? Pray. Don't say because you are studying, you don't have time to read the word of God. The word of God is first. Prayer is first. Amen. When you do those, God settles you through at what? The day. Amen. Don't let anything come between you and God. Amen. Your job shouldn't come between you and God. Amen. Just because you say, I have to be at work at 6 o'clock in the morning, so I don't have time to pray. What happened to 5 o'clock? Uh -oh. What happened to 4 o'clock? What happened to 3 o'clock? If God is that important to you, if he's that important to you, wake up early and spend time with him, quality time with him before you go. Because without him, you can do nothing. It is he who gives us power to make what? Wealth. It is he who gives us the grace to be able to work every day. So if you have to go to work at 7 o'clock, get up at 5 and spend time with God. And then at 6, go and take your shower and go work. And you find how refreshed you become. How you be filled with joy. You go to your work and you face your work with confidence. That's what the Lord does. He settles us. Little children, it says, keep yourselves from what? Idols. Don't let anything come between you and God. Not your job. Not your work. Not your wife. Not your husband. Not your children, none of those things have to come between you and God. Because you know what? If your children, if your wife, if your husband become that idol, God is able to take them out of the way. And then what will you do? Who gave you that wife? It is God. Who gave you the children? It is God. Why have the children and all those who have become your idol? Your grandchildren have become your idol. They keep you from serving God. My friend, God will say, okay, fine. If that's what you want, I'll take my own back. So none of those things have to come between us and God. There should be nothing in this earth, on this earth that should come between us and what? And God. Sometimes you find your wife will say, oh, but you don't uh, but you don't love me. But you don't love me. But you don't love me. And sometimes you find your, you feel like you're going to Yield. Don't yield. After a while, she would realize the fact that God is more important than what? Than her. Hello? And God is more important than the husband is. Don't let anything come between you. Because anything that comes between you and God is an idol. 
Anything that comes between you and God, me and God, is an idol and the Lord doesn't want. I said, I am a jealous one. God. I am a jealous one. God. I am a jealous God. And that's what God said. Amen. 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 Shall be called wonderful, wonderful, and his name shall be called wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Hallelujah! And his name shall be all right. Shall be called wonderful. Shall we all right on to our feet? And his name shall be called Jesus Christ, and his name shall be called Wonderful.